David Brewster here with another Brewster's Millions of Rants, and this is Vibrato Technique. And since I've started this channel, I've had lots of messages and requests and comments, you know, kind of filter in either here on YouTube or on Facebook too, or private messages and emails and all sorts of stuff. And, uh, you know, some of the questions were related to gear, you know, what amp I'm using or what pickups are in my guitar or strings I use and stuff like that. I've had lots of requests from, you know, specific guitarists and bands and certain genres or subgenres of music. But I've also noticed, you know, a lot of comments and questions regarding my vibrato technique. And I've had questions about picking technique and legato and, you know, different components of playing. But when I noticed a lot of people either complimenting me or asking me about vibrato, I thought, okay, I think I'm going to, you know, hit this and at least talk about this commonly overlooked technique that's very essential, you know, and it really is one of those elements in a player's style that kind of separates, you know, a certain player from another player. And you can go back and look at people like B.B. King and Albert King or Freddie King, you know, any of the three Kings, Clapton, Hendrix, you know, Van Halen. There's a ton of players. You know, Zach Wilde has very distinct vibrato, David Gilmour, you know, Jimmy Page. There's a ton. If you're curious about this, I do have a book published with Center Stream, which is distributed through Hal Leonard, but The Guitarist Guide to String Bending and Vibrato. This is from about uh, 2010, so about 10 or 11 years ago. But in this book, you know, I'm looking at string bending and then also vibrato and then combining the two techniques together. And they don't necessarily go hand in hand, but they do. I mean, because you do hear, you know, guitarists bending strings and they'll add vibrato. But then sometimes you'll just hear a single note sustained, you know, and it's kind of wiggling or moving with the vibrato technique. And then like the last section of the book is pretty cool because it's kind of broken down by different players, you know, there's Chuck Berry and Albert King and Hendrix and B.B. King. And these are essential, you know, bending of vibrato guitarists. Clapton, Jeff Beck, and there's Jimmy Page, and there's David Gilmour. And also Albert Lee and Stevie Ray Vaughan as well. And there's a ton of players, you know, that you can check out and gain some new moves or some new ideas, you know, using these very essential techniques. But, uh, you know, definitely I'd recommend the book if you want to dive a little bit deeper. And then in this lesson, we're going to look at some, you know, simple exercises. And then we're going to jump into about six, you know, famous moments from different songs from different guitarists. And that's going to really help refine and shape your uh, vibrato technique as well. So aside from the comments and requests I've seen online, I've had private lesson students, you know, just busloads of them ask, you know, for string bending and vibrato tips and suggestions, you know, over the years. And there's one, you know, specific, you know, like kind of article that I noticed in a guitar player magazine that really opened my mind and it made me think about practicing and approaching the guitar in a different way. And that was Steve Vai's uh, Martian Love Secrets that was in Guitar Player. And I think there was like a half dozen, you know, it was articles and there was no notation, there was no tab, there's no licks. He's just talking, you know, like the kind of the, uh, the mindset of a musician and practicing and all these really helpful things. But there was a segment in there where he talked about working on vibrato. And I basically, uh, you know, grabbed just kind of a sample of what he was saying in the text. But this is great. And this might be you know, kind of a left field, different way of, of working on vibrato. But this, you know, strategy works. I mean, I know it firsthand from myself and also with a lot of my students too. But check this out, pause the screen, you know, so you can read, you know, Vi's wisdom here. Basically, Vi was talking about, you know, sustaining a note with vibrato for an hour, you know, which that's, that's a long time to be sitting, you know, playing a single note with different forms and speeds and, and you know, uh, variations of vibrato. But, um, and he also mentioned there, you know, start small, like maybe start with five or 10 minutes and work up to an hour. But we're gonna start basically with Vi's idea right there, because that is a great idea. And it gives you a chance to, I mean, you can target a certain string or a, like maybe, you know, like your, maybe your vibrato needs some work, you know, lower on the fretboard or higher on the fretboard. You can literally decide, you know, where you want to play this. So I'm just gonna pick this D note right here, you know, kind of on the seventh fret there on the G string. And all we're gonna do is use your index finger and I'm just gonna use kind of just a standard vibrato, you know, kind of technique or touch there. 
And all we're doing is just rocking the string. I'm just ever so slightly bending the note toward the floor and then returning it to the normal pitch and then bending it ever so slightly. So that's basically kind of a rocking motion, you know, kind of coming from your wrist. You're not really wiggling, you know, your finger. You're moving your, your wrist, basically. You're kind of doing this. So think of B.B. King's vibrato style, you know, with the hummingbird, but it's not quite that uh, erratic. You know, we're just basically rocking that string like this. Real even and smooth, you know, don't go too, you know, erratic or too fast. You know, you don't want it to sound nervous or, or, or you know, strange like that. And you don't want it to be so subtle that you don't even hear the note moving. You know, like that. You want it just like a smooth, you know, somewhere around a half step. Maybe not quite a full half step. Because you're not really, you're not really doing that. But you do hear that note just ever so slightly kind of move. That's just a single note with one finger, you know, my index finger. You could cycle through your different fingers. And that's really important because you want to build the strength and ability in every fret hand finger. You don't want to just only rely on your index finger or third finger. You want every finger to be able to do this. So that's a good, just really basic exercise. You could put it on other strings. You could move it you know, to other positions important thing there is you're sitting with your guitar you've turned off all distractions you know you don't have a TV or a phone or anything nearby and really get absorbed in the note and the vibrato and what you're doing so it might take a while before you get to an hour but that's basically in a nutshell what Steve was talking about just sit there and force yourself to play a single note or maybe a couple notes but really concentrate and focus on what you're doing and see what happens. You know, you might discover some different approaches or different ways of doing it. You might unlock, you know, like a different speed or a different way of applying vibrato. Another thing you can try is just move through a scale and just, you know, almost exaggerate, you know, the notes of the scale of the way you're playing it and really focus on adding vibrato and just kind of, you, know, you can kind of feel it in your fingertips, maybe even in your wrist, you know, if you're doing it right. But just take a simple scale, like a minor pentatonic scale. <laughs> Through the scale and try to maintain the same speed you know on every string when you change to a different finger and uh, you know really try to mimic or kind of repeat yourself you know with that same kind of movement or the vibrato motion and you can go really slow to the top because I was kind of pulling down on every string with vibrato didn't you know matter which finger I was using but when I got to the high E string you might have noticed I was pushing upward because that you don't have enough room you know without falling off the, the edge of the fretboard there but you do have to work on that upward motion you know moving the vibrato this way and then you can practice that on other strings instead of pulling down kind of practice, you know, kind of pushing up. And I would work on both, even though I tend, I think I've kind of noticed that I tend to go down when I'm using vibrato instead of, you know, but I've definitely worked on both, you know, versions or both variations, you know, the down kind of pull and that upward kind of push. And definitely it's something to think about, you know, as you practice and kind of refine your vibrato technique. As far as string bending with vibrato, this kind of ups the ante and makes things, you know, a little trickier. So once you kind of get, you know, a better grip and kind of, you know, kind of reformed or reworked your vibrato technique with just single notes, you can obviously work on slide, you know, kind of work on sliding into notes, you know, and then using vibrato. But with bending, you know, just basically, once again, try to use all your fingers. Like here, I'm gonna bend with my pinky, and bend the C up to D, and after I do the bend, I'm going to add vibrato like this. And right there, I'm basically bending that note up, you know, to D. And then I'm just basically releasing the bend ever so slightly, and then going right back up to the note. Which I don't know if you can hear that. But 
it's a very kind of subtle you know movement there <laughs> Try that with your third finger right there, the same bend. You could try your middle finger. And then the dreaded, you know, Albert King uh, index finger bends, or, you know, with vibrato. And that's really tough, you know, to kind of use your index finger like that. You know, think of like Jeff Beck, and there's tons of people, but definitely Albert King was a wizard of bending, you know, with his index finger. That's really tough. The first song example I'm going to share here is from Pink Floyd, and I have to admit that I learned a lot about controlling and, you know, really refining my vibrato technique from studying David Gilmour's music. I'm a huge Pink Floyd fan, and I think Gilmour has some of the best vibrato on the planet. But I have to admit, when I was a teenager and I was a kid, um, you know, I was listening to Pink Floyd, and I was trying to learn some of those songs and licks, you know, by ear. And I had no idea, you know, I just assumed that David Gilmour had this killer, you know, fret hand vibrato technique, which he does. But if you ever watch video of him playing in concert, whether it's back in like the, the classic, you know, Waters era, or when he kind of took over Pink Floyd, either time period, you know, I learned later after I saw some footage that Gilmour actually uses his bar a lot, you know, for vibrato. I had no idea. So then after I saw like, uh, Delicate Sound of Thunder and Pulse and some of those, you know, concert videos, I realized he did a lot more with the bar than he does with his fingers. And then it made me think, you know, like, oh, I screwed up. You know, I've practiced those licks the wrong way, you know, for a decade or however long it had been. But then I realized, like, even though I was playing it differently than how Gilmore did, working on those licks and lines with my fingers instead of the bar, you know, as far as the vibrato, it really boosted my vibrato technique. So I'm not telling you what to do, but if you really want to shape up your, your vibrato, learn a bunch of Pink Floyd, but don't touch your vibrato bar. Do it with your hand, you know, like the manual way. And think of uh, Shine On You Crazy Diamond. You know, we've talked about the chords from that, uh, that song in other episodes here on this channel, but the guitar work, you know, like the leads and everything in that song, it's brilliant. You know, and there's like that entire song is just a vibrato, you know, workout. But think of like when the lead comes in, like during the intro, you know, after this part. And after all the building and all that stuff, you eventually hear this. that song is a vibrato workout I mean if you work on shine on you crazy diamond you know the whole thing it's just there's so much going on there's great lead work there's great chord work there's these lush you know changes and movements you know during that tune but you know take a solo like that just learning you know some of those licks and phrases and then practicing that and you know play with that for an hour you know to kind of borrow C Vi's idea from earlier so right here think of G minor <laughs> G minor pentatonic way up here in the box, bend that F up a whole step, and you're gonna milk that bend with vibrato. Something like that. And then a different position of G minor pentatonic right here. And then there's like a, basically a pre bend and release. And this little melodic line. G up to B flat right there, which is so cool. And uh, there's so much you can kind of pick up from just that one song. But then check out songs like Mother and Comfortably Numb. I mean, there's tons. Money. There's some great Pink Floyd, you know, moments and, and licks and guitar solos that you can totally sit around and just practice and you're going to refine and shape up your vibrato technique. For another song that really, you know, kind of kick-started my vibrato technique and kind of improved everything, uh, check out Life's Been Good by Joe Walsh. You know, the classic, classic song from Mr. Walsh, and Joe Walsh has always had this gritty kind of scratch and sniff and mess and finesse thing going where he plays these beautiful parts, and then he turns around and plays these clunky, you know, scratchy, kind of muted, you know, just rocking out kind of moments. 
But, uh, you know, life's been good when it starts with the, the intro. <laughs> part is great to work on especially those open position bends and there's a little bit of vibrato in there but check out the solo you know from life's been good this part <laughs> some fills in there and that's a really standard you know kind of bending phrase and it doesn't matter you can use your pinky like that or you can do it the other way I was doing earlier with just your you know, three fingers there without the pinky but there you know you're basically alternating that bending lick you know you're doing it this way grabbing that note there, that A with vibrato, and then you reverse it and do this. Which is really cool. I love Joe Walsh. But uh, you got this. And grab that vibrato, dig in a little bit. And then you hear that little funky. A little kind of funky half step, you know, bend and release. And eventually you'll hear it move down a whole step. You know, but check out that song and play with that solo. And that's really going to kind of tight, you know, tighten and refine and fine tune your bending and vibrato technique. The player from my list that I flashed earlier that influenced me as far as vibrato is Billy Gibbons. You know, ZZ Top's essential. I love ZZ Top. Especially the old stuff, you know, from the 70s. But this is from uh, Just Got Back From Babies, which is from ZZ Top's first album. It's a blues, you know, this kind of thing, but then you'll hear this. And he's really digging in, you know, super aggressive. You could pick any CZ Top song and that would be a great one to work on as far as bending and vibrato. But with this, it's in C and you kind of hear like the riff in the background moves to F. It's kind of a blues, you know, kind of riff in the background. And then you hear this biting, almost kind of Albert King uh, solo. And he's really, once again, digging in. I don't know how Billy uses like tiny little like eights or, or does he use sevens? I don't know what gauge strings he uses. They're small. And I'm a really aggressive guitarist, so I use tens. But I can't imagine, I would probably break a string like every, you know, every song if I had eights or nines or whatever. But I think he might be using sevens. I can't really keep up with his tiny string gauge, but I love Billy. But anyway, this lick, you know, think of C minor pentatonic. And he's really just, you know, grabbing those notes. You know, and just grab the C. And think of like B.B. King or Albert King or someone like that. Really aggressive vibrato. Got that biting kind of sound. And I just love those really uh, just biting, kind of gripping, you know, sounds from Billy. You know, totally one of his trademarks, but I love when he grabs a note and just really lets it have it. The player that's had a big impact on me as far as improving and refining my vibrato techniques, Eric Johnson. You know, I mean, he's a brilliant musician and guitarist. I love Eric Johnson. I've met him a couple times. He's super nice, too. But uh, this is from Cliffs of Dover. You know, we could really look at any of Eric's songs and any of his music, and they're great you know, to study and analyze and work from. But Cliffs of Dover's arguably like one of his most famous songs. And it's a lick. It's this part right here. And just a little phrase right here. position you know melodic phrase but there's little bits and moments of vibrato kind of added which is so musical and really cool and I 
also like that, you know, kind of trademark vibrato with the bend. That's kind of Eric's, you know, territory right there. It's kind of, you know, real throaty, kind of aggressive bend uh, right there. You know, really cool song. And definitely you could look at any part of that song or really any of his albums and find tons of great, you know, things to work on vibrato and string bending included. Other guitarists with just impeccable, you know, great feel and expressive, you know, it's emotive playing is Neil Sean from Journey. You know, I've learned a lot from studying Neil's music. And you could look at any Journey song and find, you know, great guitar parts and licks and fills and chord work and all kinds of stuff. But check out uh, the solo from Who's Crying Now, a very popular Journey song. And you'll hear this kind of slow, melodic, you know, very emotive solo like this. <laughs> Something like that. And of course it keeps going, but if we just look at that first phrase, you're gonna bend this D up to E, and then reach over and you know, catch this G on the high E string there with your pinky. And then release that bend, and then add vibrato to that D note, like this. And then grab that G and go to C right there. And then grab that G and go to B right there. So you're kind of walking down. And then you're using that G note almost like a pivot, like this. And right there at the end, grab that A, go back to that B note, and then you're doing this kind of exaggerated, like, bent vibrato kind of thing. Because it, it, it is vibrato, but it almost seems more like bending, too like that. And those kind of phrases are really kind of shape up, you know, your technique there. But classic solo. The last example here is from Joe Satriani. And definitely back when I was in high school and college, I was hopelessly obsessed with Satch. And I'm still a huge fan. But I know for a fact back then, you know, working on some of his music and attempting to play what I could, I know some of his, you know, vibrato and bending moves, you know, kind of rubbed off on me. And there's a ton of songs from Satriani we could look at. But there's a certain song on Surfing with the Alien a lot of players I feel kind of skipped over because it's kind of slow. It doesn't have any like wild guitar solo or anything in it. But the song Hill of the Skull from Surfing with the Alien, I think it's like 50 beats per minute or maybe even slower. But it's this very ominous and melodic, you know, slow moment during that album. And there's multiple guitars, you know, playing in different positions, you know, harmonizing and working together. And definitely, I recommend, you should work on the entire song, you know, and work on all the individual parts. But it's this one. You know, it just keeps going. you know, harmonize like way up here. You know, so that's a great song to work on, to really kind of zoom in and focus on your vibrato technique. It's going to wrap this episode of Brewster's Millions of Rants with vibrato technique. And as I mentioned earlier, I've had so many comments and requests and just messages about my vibrato. And over time, I realized, like, okay, I think everybody wants to see this, and they want to break it down, which is great. Because vibrato and string bending, they're very subtle techniques that a lot of players overlook or they neglect. But they really do kind of separate players, you know, the kind of amateur sound to the professional, you know, world-class sound. And the more time you work on it, you know, it's honestly not going to be the most exciting practice you'll ever do. But the more time you spend working on it and really shaping it and developing it, it's almost like a vocalist, you know, or an operatic singer or somebody. You know, certain vocalists have just great vibrato when you hear them sing. And then other, you know, other vocalists, they almost sound like they're cold or something when they have this kind of jerky vibrato. And you can hear that in guitarists, too. When you have that real smooth, kind of soulful sound. And then you have that really kind of just quirky, you know, real jagged kind of sound, too. And it really, it's obvious. Like, when you hear somebody that has control... 
And when you hear somebody that doesn't have control, and that's a big part of what we're talking about and looking at in this lesson, it's just building strength and control and ability with vibrato. So anyway, leave some feedback and some comments. Please subscribe to my lessons, and I'll be back before you know with more content and material. Thank you.